Hello, sewing people of the internet. Hold on a second. If you've watched my videos in the past and watched to the end, that's usually when I say thanks for watching and you can support the channel by buying stuff from my Teespring store and that kind of stuff. Uh, and all that is still true. There's a Teespring shelf and a link in the description if you want to buy a shirt like this or some stickers or something. Uh, that really helps me out. I don't do this for the money and thank goodness because I don't make enough. Uh, it's going to be years before I buy my second Lamborghini. But buying merchandise, clicking like, sharing, subscribing, and making comments all help. Which reminds me, I uh, have been terrible about saying this. Thank you. Many of you have bought merchandise, clicked like, subscribed, commented. Uh, I really, really appreciate the support. It makes the hard work that goes into making these videos worthwhile. So thank you. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to introduce you to uh, one of my latest sewing machine acquisitions. This was a surprise for me. Um, I'm just going to give you kind of an overview of this machine, why I bought it, uh, and I'm going to go into other details in a separate video later about things like the table and what I intend to do to upgrade this machine. So this machine is a Thompson PWZ500, and I thought I knew a fair amount about the history of this machine and how it relates to the Sailrite machine, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, but I didn't know that this machine existed. I didn't know that Thompson ever made a zigzag machine. Uh, so let me dive into the history real quick. Some of you have heard this before, but I still get questions about this all the time. So let me try to spell it out here as clearly as possible. Thompson, or Datho Manufacturing, as I understand it, designed the first portable walking foot machine. And let's be clear, this is not an industrial sewing machine. This is a portable walking foot machine. So Thompson invented the first one, and then at some point Sailrite entered into an agreement with Thompson, and I believe they together designed what became this model, and also was marketed as the original Sailrite LS1 and LSZ1 for the zigzag model. Both companies marketed the machine for some time, uh, I was trying to find out when Thompson disappeared. They were around long enough to have a website. It was thompsonsewing.com, but it's gone. Uh, or there's nothing there when you search for it. So I don't know exactly when they left the marketplace. It had been my understanding that it was Sailrite who uh, designed and patented the zigzag mechanism. Um, so I didn't realize that there was a, a Thompson zigzag, and that's why I bought this machine. One thing I want to point out that's different about this versus the Sailrite is, uh, and actually different from every other zigzag machine I've ever seen, is while it has a zigzag mechanism, there's no needle position lever. So with most zigzag machines, when sewing in straight stitch mode, you can move the needle to the left or right. Uh, you know, say for instance, you want to get it closer to like a zipper or something. Uh, this doesn't have that capability. I don't know that I care at all, but that is something to note if you were thinking about a Sailrite LSZ1 and have an opportunity to buy one of these, you know, that could be something to consider. I've had questions come up in videos about my other Thompson machine, about whether or not it's a clone of the Sailrite. Again, Thompson invented the first one and Sailrite worked with them to develop the design into this machine and the uh, ultra feed line. So no, this is not a clone of the Sailrite. Uh, as most people know by now, I'm a big fan of Sailrite and I'm very against the the Sailrite clone or knockoff machines that are available. I've talked about it in numerous comments and I think in other videos, but all of the other machines, the, the Reliable, the Barracuda, the Conso, all those machines, they didn't cooperatively work with the original designers. Sailrite doesn't buy off-the-shelf machines in China and then put their name on it. It's the Thompson and Sailrite design that's been copied by other manufacturers. So I don't use them. You have to make your budgetary decisions and ethical decisions uh, yourself, but uh, I don't ever use and don't care to use any of the clones of the Sailrite machines. This is not a clone. This is, the, if anything, it's Ancestor. So since I have another Thompson and a Sailrite 
and two Conso industrial walking foot machines, you might be wondering why I would buy this other than I have a sewing machine problem. Um, what this machine provides is the zigzag function. Uh, I have other zigzag machines, but they're not walking foot machines. And a walking foot zigzag machine is actually kind of an unusual thing outside of this design. Uh, there's one that I know of, one industrial walking foot sewing machine, the Conso 99, I think it is. Uh, and they're very hard to find and usually expensive when you find them. Uh, so if you want a walking foot zigzag, this is a pretty sure way to get it. And honestly, I've been considering for some time buying an LSZ one. And this just happened to pop up when I was window shopping on Craigslist. There are many reasons why one might use zigzag. The reason I want it is for doing bar tacks to secure webbing and high stress areas on bags that I make. And since the bags I make are made out of heavy duty materials and often have thick or difficult to feed seams, uh, I prefer walking foot machines. So having a walking foot zigzag machine means that I still have the capability to feed heavy, hard to feed materials and achieve the zigzag stitch or the bar tack that I want. I want to talk about what I paid for this machine and how I got it, partly because the value on sewing machines is, I mean, like maybe a lot of used things, it's kind of hard to say what something is worth. It's worth whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. But I see a lot of weird pricing when I look on the online various classifieds for sewing machines. I've seen machines that I've gotten for 10 bucks at a thrift store advertised for $900 by someone who has absolutely no idea what they have and for some reason think it's worth a lot of money when it's not uh, and I sincerely hope someone will pay that for it because then I'll sell mine. Uh, I see the same thing a lot with industrial machines. An industrial walking foot machine might be worth let's say $750 but a non-walking foot industrial machine you know probably a couple hundred bucks maybe and someone who inherits one or buys one at an estate sale or something just sees industrial machine and thinks, oh, I can get you know, $700 or $1,000 for this thing. And not for me, they can't. So I say all that to say I paid what I paid for this machine for reasons that I'll go into, but that doesn't mean that I got a particularly good deal on it, to be honest with you. I think I paid, uh, I think I paid a fair price at best and maybe overpaid a little, but you know, Again, if, if you really want one of these and you find one, you, you know, they don't pop. I didn't know they made this machine. So uh, in all the years I've been looking, I've never seen one. So, you know, if you want it, you're probably going to pay up for it to some extent. So uh, I was just window shopping on Craigslist. I saw this immediately, freaked out, contacted the guy. Uh, it was actually a two and a half hour drive away from me uh, that I went to go get it. Uh, I paid $550 for the machine. Uh, now, it came in a brand new Sailrite industrial style table, and there's a reason why that helps me, that made me slightly more willing to pay up a little bit. It also came with Sailrite's much coveted Monster 2 wheel, and as you can see, it's in my hands now and not on the machine. Uh, the reason for that is it doesn't fit very well on this machine. And I don't know if it's this individual machine or if it doesn't fit Thompson's in particular. I'm going to try it on my other Thompson and on my Sailrite and try to figure out what's going on. I can tell you that when it was on, like, this, this thing's worth it. Get it. If, you, if you're thinking about it, like, it makes a huge difference in the slow speed control. And I wish I could show you, but you'll have to wait till another video. But there was some interference with a bracket on this, so uh, the clutch wouldn't go all the way on. So I took it off, um, and I'm going to either put it on my Sailrite or figure out a way to make it work on this. So this upgrade that I paid up for right now isn't, isn't paying off, but I have other machines I can use it on, so no big deal. The machine also came with a Sailrite stitch plate with markings for your seam allowances. And this is made for a Sailrite... LSZ one, it doesn't fit this at all. So, I don't know, I'll do something with it. I paid about $350 for my other Thompson. I figured this one being a zigzag, you know, a Sailrite Ultrafeed zigzag machine sells for about $100 more than a non-zigzag. So, using that logic, you know, $450 seems like a, a fair 
price to pay for the machine and then you know the extras that came with it. Uh, it you know I, I think it's okay. I didn't buy this to make money or to sell it. You know if you can find one of these at a yard sale or a thrift store for fifty bucks or something, buy it. Like you know that's that's how I like to find my machines, but very few people have these and don't know what they are. So there you go. So let me show you how the thing sews. For demonstration purposes, I'm using this rubber mat. I made a video about this recently. I thought it was going to be a really useful thing for me, but it tears way too easily. But it is a very thick material and will demonstrate the sewing capabilities of this machine. Since I bought the machine to do bar tacks primarily, let me show you how you do a bar tack if you don't know. And there are dedicated machines that can do bar tacks in like a couple of seconds, but that's all they do and they cost a lot of money and I don't have the need or room or money for one right now. So at least this gives me the ability to do an effective bar tack. If you don't have a zigzag machine, you can just stitch back and forth several times to get the same basic effect. It's just not as good. To start, just do a straight stitch. And if you're following a standard of some kind, there may be specifications for how many stitches per inch to do this uh, and how wide your zigzag has to be, but that's beyond the scope of this. So I'm going to raise the needle. You don't want to make a zigzag adjustment with the needle buried. And I'll just go ahead and make it pretty wide. And then I'm going to reverse back over that stitch. And then go back again. That's how you'd make a bar tag. This video is about this machine, not about this table, but I mentioned earlier that there was a reason why this table was beneficial to me. So let me show you. The Thompson and Sailrite machines, uh, the base of the machine is the same as many vintage Singer machines and probably other brands too. So if you have a vintage Singer table, you can put one of these machines or a Sailrite into it. But that also means that this table that's cut out for this machine can hold a lot of my vintage domestic machines that I like to use. And something I've been conceiving for a long time is to make a table that will accept all these machines. I have a bunch of these machines that I don't really use very often, and I can't really keep them out uh, where they're available to me all the time. It would be nice to just have one table that I could take one out, put another one in. Well, now I do. I just have to buy some of these clips to bolt onto all of them so I can easily put them in and flip them back. But I'm uh, pretty happy about that. So anyway, that is my new Thompson PWZ 500. If you can find one of these, and if you're in the market for a portable walking foot with zigzag, it's definitely one to consider. Uh, again, if you need the ability to change needle position, then you know that is uh, a thing, although I really don't know if I've ever really truly needed that. My 
Immediate plans for the machine are to upgrade the stitch length and reverse lever to the current model that's on the Sailrite machines. It's a huge improvement over this one. And I'm also going to be putting a Sailrite workhorse servo motor under this table. Don't think I'll be able to use that with my vintage machines. Uh, that'll just be for this machine. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, that's coming sometime soon. I hope you found that useful or informative or entertaining in some way. If you have any questions or comments, you know where to post them. If you like what I'm doing here, you know where to find the subscribe button. Please click it. Thank you so much for watching.